my name is Frank W. Brank. I graduated from high school in 1947. In June, in August, I enlisted in the Navy from all in New York. And when I went in, I was already picked for electronic school. So well, I went through boot camp as a seaman recruit, ET. But I got a boot camp. In fact, here's a boot camp picture right here. This is a picture of our boot camp members. Right here. I got a boot camp. I was seven second class and uh, come home on two weeks leave. Went back and roughly went right about across the street to electronic school. Stayed there until I think of July or that when I graduated. Philippine Sea out of Quantum Point, Rhode Island. Just pick up home port, we can get home. Get easy, which worked out good for a while. So, from there, we took a cruise to the Caribbean. And we were over there about six months. And we come back, went in to drive back to Boston. <coughs> from out of Boston. We went down the Caribbean for three months, shakedown crews and training crews. And, uh, well, well I, let me back up. When I come back from the Mediterranean, they sent me up to this radar school, SX radar, air and surface search radar combined in that. And it was a four, four week training program. And then I went back to my ship. Then we went on from there for a cruise to the Caribbean and come back. And we had stopped in New York, Baltimore, Norfolk, we spent a little time there, Boston, Ponson Point. Stopped at Jacksonville once. And then in uh, May, May, he didn't give it to me. The latter part of May, we went through the Panama Canal. And so we were sitting in Long Beach, California, when the Korean War broke out. We were at a, <coughs> oh, the Shriners were there, Shriners Convention. And we had open house where we took them on tours throughout the ship where we could and that. I acted as one of the guys because I was first class at the time. And you can think a dozen people or so at a time. And that was fun. I had a lot of invitations for meals and that. Got a lot of tips when we weren't supposed to 
think they shake your head, all of a sudden you got a bill in there. So then the Korean War broke out, so it was way out there we went. Down to San Diego. Loaded up stuff for us. And the Valley Forge, which was already over there. They were the only carrier over there. And we took off as soon as we could. <coughs> we got the Hawaiian Islands. Spent about two weeks there. And uh, little training stuff like that. And Zingo right over all of that. We met the Valley Forge in Okinawa. And gave her all their stuff and that. And from there, we were, that's when they had us way down on the end of the peninsula there. Mm -hmm. um, and we treated right down to the end there just about. Right. <coughs> so Valley Forge went up one side, we went up the other side to cut off their supply lines. So we were right in there in the beginning of that. There was just us two carriers there, but then a bunch of the other carriers did get over there. I don't know, I guess there were all six of them after a while. So then we could go in, spend about a month out there, go into well, Yokohama and one of them places to resupply and stock out and get a little recreation back out again. And then they had the invasion of Incheon and that, so they pinched them off here. So we took part in that too. This is where I got these battle stars from. From Busan in China. And then the last one was from Hung Man, when the Marines were trapped up in the Chosen Reservoir. We helped get them all flying cover for them like that. When that happened, we were all set to go in for our turn in the port. Didn't work. <laughs> we stayed right out there. So we had a look at it. was snowing it. We had to keep shoveling the plate back and everything. Oh, this is and the ship here? This is that. That's a carrier, yeah. Now this is when we come back. And this is the air group that was on at the time. And that, you can look closely, we had a banner here. The balloons on. We were over there, not quite a year, but enough that they give us permission to fly that banner. I think there's a float for every man and a balloon for every officer. And like that, we were going under the Golden Gate Bridge here. Oh, okay. We come back in. Now uh, we come in there and uh, this is just a regular picture of the ship. Forgot where this was taken. This anchored out in the harbor somewhere. Get a side view of it. My battle station was up in the air, just forward the secondary con. We slept back here. And the fan tail underneath it. There. Battle stations you get from there up to there in the heck of a hurry. <laughs> and that ace club called us play deck. If I had to I came up a cable run. You know, sorry. And our shop was right in here. We didn't stay in watch. We had a man that didn't stay there at night to, to get any calls for a repair job or like that. And he come down and get whoever took care of it or that. And you got up in the middle of the night oh, and, and you stayed there till it was fixed. <laughs> no excuses. Drink a lot of that heavy midnight cup. Coffee too, believe me. Uh, that's what the third style was for, was for Hung Nam up there in the Chosen Lord's Boy. Those were the three major battles that we were in. Of course, they got the occupation room for both Europe and Asia because it was in the Mediterranean first, and then we got it from being over the, there in the national defense, I guess everybody got. And the UN ribbon, the China service, because we were sort of close to China. In fact, we photographed the Chinese coast. It was just before MacArthur got fired, because he wanted to play there and he wanted to pitch it. And of course, this is my new contact, though. With my name on it, to show it's mine. 
And these are all like real ones that we got. No. A couple of these, like this one here is a unit, a Navy unit mm -hmm. combination. And uh, this one here was a presidential unit combination. Then last year I got this Korean service medal. See? And this this here is a task force we were in over in Korea. Task Force 77. Now did you wear that on your uniform? No, it was just I forgot where I picked it up. I was supposed to wear it on a sweater or something. We never wore it, no. And this was the last uniform I had. The first class petty officer. Four years service. Of course, I used it five years and six days. <coughs> and uh, the second time I went over there, when I left the ship in San Francisco, uh, another guy and I we went down to a uh, San Diego and took seaplane thunder out of off balls. Got it ready. We went back over. <coughs> we set up an air base in the harbor over there in Evil County. There was an Australian air base there. But the United States Air Force was in the process of taking it over. So we were there to act as a in between while this was taking place. And then we uh, played in patrols and that. That was easy to do. And then those all seems to be pretty good to get along with, too. And then, then I left the ship there, took a train up to Yokohama, had a transport. A whole regiment of French Canadians on there. A lot of wild ones. There was just a few of us sailors. We had better quarters. We had Got him a ship's company and kind of helped out on the ship and that. And those guys were wild. And they were waiting to take off and they'd look over there and they were ready to jump off and we're all processed for the state. We got part way home. The main bearing went. You would have heard that squeal. You could hear it all through the ship. So rather than come out, they turned around and went back to Yokohama. Sat there and nobody could leave the ship. And those guys, they went nuts. <laughs> so it was fixed, then we come back. And I got discharged in Seattle, Washington. So, what else do you want to know? What made you decide to join the Navy? I don't know, I just like the idea of it. I like the idea of uh, the radar part of it. And I've been down the hallway a couple of times to get information. And I wrote my senior team in high school on Navy radar and all the different animals. They used radar, fish, and they used soda, and that how it worked the way we did it. <coughs> so that's why I decided to go to the Navy. Besides that, they had good schooling in that. So I went down, I was all good for three years, and they that's feel about taking a test for electronic school. We normally, because my test scores going in were pretty high. So I took that and they said, well, we'll, we'll know in about two weeks <coughs> whether you passed or not. And I got a letter a couple weeks and I passed. So I went down that visit for four years. Of course, it's up to you whether you get there or not because Every two weeks you had the exam, and you could pluck out any time. Mm -hmm. You had to keep up. How old were you in this picture? Yeah. 18 years old. 18. I was taken right out of old cab. As you can see, I was even second class. I was there for two weeks. Because <laughs> when I went back and went to school, I was first class. And that. If you had high enough marks, you could graduate to the office of second class at the top. 10% there. That wasn't that smart. <laughs> so after you came home, what did you do? Well, went to work for G. No fanfare, no. In fact, the war was still on when I got out. What we call the war, they call it a conflict. <laughs> Forgotten war. Yeah. In fact, it's still a 
still not uh, on the system side. No. So technically, there's still a war for them. It's, it's just a truce. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, when all that fight needed it right back when they started from. All those lost their lives. We lost quite a few in the ship too. Accidents, planes. Had to take off right out of zoom. So they were they overloaded them. And they used to have this napalm and these tiny tin rockets that they could lob into the caves and that. Things. We had different accidents and fires on the ship. How many were in the crew? Yeah, the whole ship? Mm -hmm. What, two, three, and four thousand, I think. Well, us guys in our division, my tronics division, when we went to the <coughs> well, Mediterranean and all, all over on the East Coast, right? There was only about eight to ten of us guys. When they sent us to Korea and they called up the reserves and like that, there was somewhere between 25 and 30 of us. And they were getting each other's way, really. I mean, we had three chiefs there and they were just hanging around, so to speak, and they were just talking about leaving their jobs or business and things like that. The command, you know, they overloaded you, really. You stayed for five years. That's uh, considerably longer than a regular enlistment. Yeah, too much year. Yeah, when the war broke out, he froze us off for an extra year. Oh, okay, so. And then the extra six days was because we got, didn't get in on time and that. So. It was an old discharge. I got it right there in the pool. Right? <laughs> um, yeah. Then we got out with my buddy and I, he lived in Chestertown. We bought a car in Seattle. Took a trip down the coast to pick up all our stuff so we'd ship back, you know. Stopped in Frisco and down the road. Hey, hey, this one. We headed back across. Come up through the desert. Las Vegas, we had to lay over a few days there because we put it on the pistol. Right up to the old stone park, see there, right across. We got one by a month later. So, saw some of the world. And then, then he went his way, I went my way, I bought out his half of the car. Kept it for a while and traded it. It was a 46 Hudson. <laughs> I think I went to work for GE. I was there roughly five years or so. I got laid off twice the second time I didn't go back. I batted around for, I don't know, five, six, seven years like that. The jobs were hard to find, did whatever I could. Worked in the gas station, worked as a laborer. And uh, finally I heard of an opening over there at Kurt Neibert. The guy was quite mad, so I had to go right over there. So I like machine work, I liked it better than electronics work. They hired me. I stayed there for 36 years. Doing something I really enjoyed doing. So the machine, I said, well, I'm just a machine operator. I don't, you give me a blueprint and I'll make it for you. You stayed on the USS Philippine Sea for the whole time that you were in? I was on there for about three years. I left her in San Francisco. Went down and got the other ship out of Moth Falls. Went back over for about another six months or so. To <coughs> Excuse me. So my list one was up. Which, which, now what was the name of the second ship? USS Kenneth Whitey. AV. 14, I think. The Philippine Sea was a CB-47. They had three carriers bigger than that at the time. And, uh, I think there's about eight of us. Lady, Gearside, Valley Forge, 
It wasn't on New York City, it was the name of that one. I can't think of the names. I can't think of the names of the other ones. They had the Coral Sea and the, May and the Midway and the Roosevelt were the three big, real big carriers. We were the biggest ship to go through the Panama Canal. You could almost step right over out of the land there and so on. That was quite an experience. Good, good piloting. Yes. See those mules going through the dock. You look like you could still fit in your uniform. I don't know. I never tried it. <laughs> yeah, I had to hang in the closet for a good many years. Frank, what, uh, of all the time you spent in service, what, uh, what comes back to you as the most memorable moment that you spent in that five, five years and some odd days? Well, I think the most memorable probably is my first night at sea, we lost a man overboard. We couldn't find him. And I'll never forget it. It's always stuck with me. <clears throat> Most of us guys are kind of give us the woolies. He ran across the flight deck and jumped off of the catwalk and kind of slipped herself and ran out of the way. We stopped to look for him. But we all figured that the undertow took him right down and put him through the props because he was so close to the side. Well, how far was it from the catwalk to the water? 100 uh, feet? Not quite that much. Well, the flight deck, the flight deck's, uh, what, 72, 78 feet above the water, so maybe about 70 feet. Then yeah. one time in Korea, we had a plane come in. We had a, a whole flight ready to go up front, all fuel and, and loaded with ammo and that. The plane come in, missed the barriers and that. And, we in the, followed into those planes, six of them there, and they went up in flames and that. And it was quite a big fire. There were quite a few, there were six of them we lost. They just couldn't save them. They just pushed them out over the side to save the others. And not a man was, was hurt or, or killed in that at all. It was really amazing. I'm fighting them fires, some of those guys up on them flames, they foamed out and that, killing the flames. That was a hair experience, because <laughs> it scared all of us. Well, all that fire. There were several other different little things, like I see this guy walking to the prop, and they cut his head off, top of his head. He was a squirrel man, he lived till they got another the sick bay. Well, that's three days down there. Yeah. Only young seamen. They were chalk men. They carried a chalk for the plane there to go through on the wheel. They were going forward, see. Whenever the plane stopped, they'd chalk them up. They were getting ready to take off. Well, the plane stopped, and he did. He walked right on into the prop. He just wasn't paying attention. Well, I guess this gets us towards the end here. What would you say is probably the happiest time you spent? Well, two times, really. When we docked along the French Riviera and they had Liberty along there and that, that was really nice. And then while we were in the Hawaiian Islands, a bunch of us guys went over together at Liberty, we ran into these two women, girls. Their father was a high monkey monk in the Navy, but they offered to take us a tour of the island. So we went on the next day, they had the car and they had a picnic lunch and everything. They were all, everything was an upboard, above board, no, no hanky-panky about it. But it was nice, yeah. They gave us a complete tour of the, of the island there. That was really a pleasant. I think we really enjoy that. I got to see some of the things that my father told me about because 
he had spent a couple of years in the Wyatt Islands in the Army. So I think that's about the two. Now, not only that, for the five years I was there, I only missed one Christmas home. I thought I was pretty lucky on that. Mm -hmm. And that Christmas was about the time the Chosen Reservoir had that one. We were over there for that. So I feel, feel pretty good about that. Because I was a homeboy, that's one reason why I wanted to get out to I come home so there. I had a job off of me in uh, Los Angeles there. My buddy and Addy said, well, we got to go home. We haven't been home in quite a while. So, so they give us 30 days. I come back here. He went with us from electric, and I went to down to see what GE offered. Kind of got the same job for about five cents. An hour less, so I come back over there for five cents, we stay there. <laughs>